Welcome to the informational webinar for school partnerships with the Academy de Rome in France. This is our broadcast for Thursday, October 29th in the morning. Please note that our broadcast today is from 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time, which is 2 to 3 p.m. in Central European time, where our partners in the Academy are located. Today's agenda is fairly simple and straightforward. Uh, we're going to start with a welcome and overview of NC Global Education. We're going to talk briefly about our international agreements in general, and then about our new MOU or Memorandum of Understanding with the Academy de Rome in France. We'll also talk a little bit about education in France and how we form those school partnerships, and then talk about the submitting a school partnership application. We'll finish with a wrap up and any questions that remain from our conversation so far. Uh, my name is Anne Marie Gunter. I'm the K-12 World Languages Consultant at the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, and I'm a member of the NCDPI Global Education Steering Committee. Um, I'm here today to share with you information about our international agreements because that is one of the things that I work on on that committee with NC Global Education. First, I want to start out and make sure you have full access to your WebEx event control panel. Um, the WebEx is online and via app, so you may be joining on your computer or on a smart device. Either one is fine. Um, your display will look similar to the one on the left. It may vary a little bit depending on um, which way you're joining us today or which browser you're using. Everyone is on mute for recording purposes. Um, and we all have a control panel on the side that displays the host or speaker, uh, any polling questions we do periodically. Um, as well as a Q&A, a question and answer space, and a chat. And I would encourage you that if you have questions or anything that you share them in the chat to all, either all participants or all panelists, so that we can all see them and talk about the questions. Others may have the same questions. There's also buttons on the bottom of your screen. And I'm going to show you a slightly larger version of that. Uh, that Q&A panel I talked about is um, located using the blue button with the question mark on it. Next to that should be another blue button with um, a, a chat bubble, and that's an access to our chat box. Um, some of the other things that are there might be of use to you. You see the three dots. If you click on that, you can see some other things you have access to. And when we're all done today, you'll click the red button with the X on it to leave or exit our broadcast. I'm going to stop now and do a quick sound check. If you've been hearing me share all this information, please go ahead and um, put that in the chat box or the Q&A that you can hear me loud and clear and that we are good to go forward with our discussion this morning. All right. Thank you very much. I do see some notes coming in. Great. All right, well, let's start with a, our poll question first. From where are you joining us this morning? Um, you see here this, the map of North Carolina with its eight different regions. These eight regions are what's called our economic prosperity zones by our state legislature. They are also the eight regions that we use educationally for representation on our state board of education. So you may be in the northeastern part of the state, either in the inner and outer banks or the southeastern part with the inner and outer Crystal Coast. You could also be in North Central uh, North Carolina, what we call the heart of NC, or in the Sand Hills. Um, we also have the Piedmont Triad region, called the Rolling Hills, the Southwest Metro Lina region, and then the Northwestern Blue Ridge Mountains and the Western Blue Ridge Mountains. Of course, you could also be in another state today. Kind of depends on what's happening with you. I'll go ahead and launch our poll, and you just click on the response that you want to let us know where you're joining us from today. I also see we have uh, someone who's calling in today. Welcome. I don't know if you can reach the controls um, for um, the region that you're in and use the polling feature, but if you can, please go ahead. And if not, please don't worry. All right. Looks like we also have some other folks coming in and they can join in and jump in and uh, click on their control panel on the poll to indicate where they're joining us from in the state today. All 
All right. Thank you for sharing. I'll go ahead and share the results with you too. We do have a small uh, but focused group today. Um, and our poll indicates that we have people here today from the southeastern region of the state, the inner and outer coastal coast, as well as the north central part of the state or the heart of North Carolina. One thing to think about um, when we look at our map, especially because we're going to be looking at a map of France in a little bit about our school partnerships, is to remember that we have these eight different regions. Um, we have 100 counties in North Carolina. And from that, we have 116 uh, public school units or school districts. And so that's kind of how our state is organized, educationally speaking. And we're going to be looking at how that compares to France and the Academy de Rome that we'll be working with in our school partnerships. So keep those numbers in mind for North Carolina. I do see a question already in the question box that I'd like to answer for everyone. Uh, the question is, will we get a copy of this presentation? And the answer is yes. My plan is to, um, after recording this and the recording is processed, to post this information um, to uh, our website, um, as well as uh, to share it with you as our participants. I'm still working out with our NCDPI Global Education Committee how that will be, but I can certainly send you a copy. All right. Well, let's go on for this morning and dive into what we're here to talk about, so starting with our overview of NC Global Education. Um, you may already know that one goal of our Global Education Task Force several years ago and those commitments that came from it was to renew existing and to explore new Memorandum of Understanding or MOUs with international partners and the State Board of Education. Partnerships like that inform the development of, of course, our K-12 curriculum, teacher preparation, and professional development in both countries for educators. Currently, our State Board of Education has agreements with the public education systems in China and Spain, and now most recently, France. Those educators that are involved with the MOUs and the professional groups that work with them um, do things like support exchanges for students and educators, uh, joint projects between classrooms, and awards for schools and students. And I'm sure you're probably already familiar with some of that, but I wanted to make sure we had that information shared on our slides today in case you need to share this material or other information from this broadcast with others in your school or district. With our international agreements, we have three, like I said. The oldest agreement we have dates from 1995, when the first MOU was signed with the Kingdom of Spain. Our renewal year for that is this year, 2020, and that's one of the things that our NCEDPI Global Education Steering Committee is looking at as we move into November and December of this year. We also have an agreement that started in 2008 with Jiangsu Province in China and its renewal year will be in 2021. And most recently, of course, just signed this year, is our agreement with the Academy de Rome in France, which will be renewed in 2024. So you can see that all of our international agreements look about the same and are basically focused on the same things, although each one is unique in its own ways too. Um, most of our MOUs um, have a four or five year renewal period, and you can see we've had great success with the MOUs we've had over time. If you want more information about these international agreements um, beyond what we're going to talk about today, you can always go to our Global Education landing page on the new DPI website at bit.ly slash ncglobaled. Please note, by the way, that we have a bit.ly link. Um, capitalization is important. So if you're going to go there, um, be sure you capitalize components of it. Once you get there, you can click on the International Agreements section on the right to learn more. And so I'll go out there briefly just so you can see that, but notice that we um, have this on our slides again in case you need to use this with others to share information. But if we go out to NC Global Ed, you see here an overview of our vision and mission. There's information about our global education recognitions for individuals as well as organizations. Uh, information about our global education resources, and finally, details about our international agreements. When I click on international agreements, you see the web page I was referring to that talks a little bit about our international agreements, um, how that came from our task force report, and then there are drop-downs of 
all of the international agreements we have. So that is all there for you, should you need it. As I was saying, with the international agreements, they do inform the development of our curriculum, teacher preparation, and PD. They also support um, educator exchanges and visits and collaborative projects between schools, teachers, classrooms, and students. One thing I would like to note here is that there's no financial obligation on our international agreements from either group that's involved. So whether it's North Carolina or our partners in other countries, no financial agreements. So what we do is either free and something we do professionally as an exchange, um, or if there's information or there's things to be done like educator exchanges, that can be worked out on an individual basis. Um, just looking briefly from the page we looked at on the DPI website, the international agreements have some basic information. Here's the uh, screenshot of the one on Jiangsu province in China. It has information about when things were signed um, and when we renew. Um, some basic information about the goals of each agreement. And as I said, those are similar in nature, but they do have some unique um, parts of them or components of them that are important. And then there's a list of current activities that are going on with that MOU. And again, those things vary quite a bit. You see the one here for China um, looks at, at and from a goal standpoint, strengthening knowledge and understanding of each other's countries um, and facilitating, facilitating the development of programs and activities. Uh, some of our current activities are things like Confucius classrooms, joint conferences, and sister school relationships. Similarly, with the Kingdom of Spain one, um, you see that we have uh, details about when we renew, but also objectives for what we do um, in regards to pr promoting relationships between citizens of North Carolina and Spain, fostering knowledge and appreciation of culture, um, providing students who enroll in these programs with a bilingual but multicultural education, and providing, again, professional growth and professional development opportunities to teachers of North Carolina and Spain. Some of our current changes and projects with that MOU include the International Spanish Academies, or ESAs, we call them. We have two of those in North Carolina, Collinswood Language Academy in Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, and also um, Siler City Elementary School in Chatham County Schools. The Kingdom of Spain offer, also offers School of the Year awards that our schools can apply for and provides some visiting teachers through a variety of means. And now we come to our latest MOU. Um, on the left-hand side, you have already seen our official announcement that came out at the beginning of the month on October 7th about our new partnership with the Academy de Rem, which we characterize as a regional school district in France. And I'll kind of show you why later on when we look at that now. But that was our official announcement. Um, we had uh, finished all the signing um, in the summer, but didn't get a chance to officially announce until later this fall. As you can see on the right hand side um, from the website, we have information like we had before. Um, this particular MOU has some principles that we all work on and they pull directly from our MOU document where we look at things like supporting the teaching and learning of languages and cultures, promoting a better knowledge and understanding of the educational systems, providing professional growth or professional development opportunities to teachers uh, in North Carolina and that, that area of France. Um, establishing collaboration between teachers and encouraging the, them to team up on projects and facilitating language learning opportunities for students, including short term educational exchanges as we're able to do them. We have two main projects with this MOU already happening. The first is that just like with the Kingdom of Spain, um, France has a way to recognize schools and they have the La Belle Franca Education recognition um, that EE Waddell Language Academy has earned in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools. I think we even have someone on the line this morning from that school. We also have several school and teacher partnerships happening already. Notice that that involves four high schools in uh, four different districts. But um, even though it looks like just four, there are actually seven partnerships already established because some of those schools have multiple partnerships and involve teachers from uh, French as well as areas like science and career and technical education. So there's a lot happening already with this MOU. One thing I'd like to share with you is some of the things that are unique about this MOU and that we will try to make a component of all new MOUs, whether they're renewals or new partnerships in general with other countries that we haven't yet had an international agreement with. Um, first of all, there's a new global recognitions and networking section in this MOU or international agreement. 
It includes um, information about our school designations. Some of you are familiar with that, Global Ready Schools or Global Ready Districts designations that you can earn through NC Global Education. There's also a section on the Global Languages Endorsement, or GLE, which is our North Carolina's seal of biliteracy recognition for graduating high school seniors. And there's information about the Global Educator Digital Badge, which is a series of um, things you do to earn a recognition as a global educator. So you do a lot of professional development as well as a capstone project to earn that. So all of that information we've included in our MRU and we want to connect with our partners in France who have similar kinds of designations for individuals and organizations like schools and districts. I also want to note that um, the Academy de Rome is the same academy as Virginia is partnered with. And that makes uh, it very good for both states since we have similar educational systems and many of our teachers and schools already connect with each other uh, in professional development. It's very logical for us to be with the same academy as Virginia. Also, we have specific information in our new MOU that um, any pre-K through 12 um, grade level or subject area can be part of the partnership and do collaborations with teachers in France. So you don't have to be a French teacher or even in world languages, but you certainly can be. Um, but we want to think beyond that because France and, and North Carolina are looking for partnerships and collaborations that go over a wide range of areas. And finally, one of the things about this memorandum of understanding that's sort of unique is that they already had a school partnership application ready to use, and we've been able to put it into use, as I said, and develop partnerships already with four different high schools or four different districts. So that's a lot happening with our MOU, given that it's so new to us, um, but there's a, a lot of opportunity here for you to get involved, too. So I'll stop for a moment. I've kind of talked about what MOUs are and what we do with them in the state of North Carolina, and I'd like to hear from you. So in the chat box, um, I'd like you to answer one of these questions. The basic question is, what can MOU do for you? Either you as an educator or you with your students or your programs, whether those are academic programs, career and technical education or CTE, extracurricular programs or what, whatever you have in mind. Uh, what could an MOU do for your schools, an elementary school, a middle school, or a high school? And what could an MOU do for your district or your charter school? So take a moment and answer just one of those questions in the chat box um, to think about what could an MOU do for you from your perspective. All right, I already see one answer. Uh, Barrett says he will be looking for a collaboration to interest university students as intern or as future teachers. And that's definitely something that our MOU already do to some degree, but certainly could be emphasized. Um, in addition, of course, to connecting with our pre-K through 12 colleagues in France, we also want to connect with the universities they work with to get teachers and also to train teachers and attract um, future teachers to our profession. All right, Jessica has noted that they are a new um, global language immersion magnet school in the district, and they want to use the MU as a way to stand out uh, as the only school with this partnership. They'd be interested in uh, both France and Spain connections, and they believe this provides an extraordinary opportunity for marketing school and the, the focus they have with their magnet theme. All right, and I see um, some other folks chiming in. Maybe you see these two in the chat box. Um, Margaret actually said she agrees with Jessica. They're at the same school, so they're interested in the same kinds of goals uh, for, for this MOU and these potential school partnerships. 
Um, Lisa said she would like to see some examples of effective collaboration in middle school classes. And I'm glad you brought that up because that is something we're going to talk about a little later on. And something I do want to emphasize, as I said, that these MOUs work for all levels, all grade levels, all subject areas, and in fact, these school partnerships that we're looking for today seek to have people from different areas. You know, you've seen so far that we have collaborations with high schools in North Carolina, which is great, but we could also have them with middle schools and elementary schools. Um, uh, Lisa, this is a different Lisa. We have two on the line this morning. Another Lisa says that she would like to use the MOUs to expand on their global work for all stakeholders, both educators and students. Um, and that's always a good goal because an MOU can be a very powerful document because it can impact everyone. So you may be focused on one or two things with it right now, but at some point you can also think broader than that and consider how else it could impact your work as an educator in your school and in your community. Um, Baron is also asking a question, how would the MOU connections be extended to the schools? So let's talk about that for a minute. One of the questions I've had about our MOUs at the state level is, um, do, do schools or districts then have to form their own MOU? And the answer is no. Because we have an MOU as a state um, and we operate the way we do in North Carolina, um, this state level agreement allows any of our districts or charter schools or frankly any of our other schools, our independent schools as well, to um, capitalize on the benefits of having a state level MOU and to do things like apply for school partnerships through our MOU agreement, uh, sort of under that umbrella, if you will, so that everyone can get involved who wants to get involved. And they can also extend out to many schools. So you can have it, um, you can use the MOU for things in your district in general or for each school that wants to get involved. So consider that this is, like I said, a broad umbrella um, that allows us to do many things. And we're really only limited by our imagination what those things might be. So today we're going to talk about our school partnership applications. So I'll go ahead and move along to that um, so that we know a little bit more about that and can get started. Um, I want to talk a little bit about education in France. I mean, some of you are probably familiar with that already, which is great. But I wanted to share with you what um, had been shared with us when we first started talking to the academy in France that we're partnered with about school partnerships. Um, Aurora Romberg, who is my contact person for our school partnership applications and other things having to do with this MOU, is um, what's called the Chargé de Mission at the Academy de Rem in France, and she provided some of the details you're going to see here last October at a meeting we were having about the new MOU and how the school partnerships might look. One of the things is that she kind of gave us an overview of education in France. Remember I said at the beginning, North Carolina as a state is divided into eight different regions, and you saw those. Um, we have 100 different counties across those regions, and we have 116 school districts or public school units. So in, in comparison, France as a country has 17 regions, 30 academies, an academy is kind of like a regional school district, if you will, that encompasses um, a, a particular part of the country of France, and it has 101 what, the, what are called departements, are probably similar to our counties. So um, we are similar um, and a little bit different in comparison to France and the way we're organized like that. But let's talk about the education system in France specifically. In France, in grades pre-K through five, they have a similar system as ours. Notice that primary school is for um, children ages three to 11 years old. So they start a little younger than we do, but pre-K um, mature programs can be um, reaching out to four-year-olds, even in North Carolina, just depends on the program. Um, and their primary grades are broken into nursery school or école maternelle for three to six-year-olds, and then elementary school, like we have école elementaire for children ages six through 11. And then you see on the right hand side a further breakdown of like the grade levels and things that we would think of here for grades pre-k through five so that's their elementary section of education or primary education at the secondary level or secondaire um, that's obviously like our middle school and high school 
And so that's for children ages 11 through 18. Um, and I want to kind of distinguish how they look at this because this is very similar to what we have in the United States and in North Carolina, but it also varies a little bit. So for secondary, it's broken into both lower secondary and upper secondary. Lower secondary is very similar to our middle school. It's students ages 11 through 15, and they're called college. Um, some people confuse that with colleges, which is different for us, but their middle schools are called college. Notice that they have their grade levels, and instead of counting up to the highest grade level, they're sort of doing a countdown. Then their upper secondary schools, um, for 15 to 18 year old students, um, these are called lycées. Uh, so that would be the French word much for high schools like we have here. One of the things about their high schools that is very similar to ours is that they have what they call a general route or technological route, as well as a vocational route, which is very similar to our career and technical education or CTE. The way they structure that looks a little bit different than what we actually do, um, but their students have those same kinds of options to go that general route or sort of university preparation or to go the vocational route where they have career and technical education preparation. So both are options to students in France. And one of the things that Aurora uh, presented to us last October was the fact that things are changing a little bit in France. It used to be kind of um, a set structure on how students got into the different routes in the upper secondary schools. And now it's a little more open to the free choice of the student and the path that they want to take. So much more similar to what we have here in the United States and in North Carolina, where students decide which route they want to take in order to move forward towards graduation. And I see some people commenting um, about that change in the education in France, that that's a big change, and you're right, it is. And in fact, when Aurora was presenting that to us last fall, she said they still didn't know how that would look as it rolled out. Um, it is a significant change in how they look at education and how they look at the structure of their educational system. Uh, but she emphasized that there are more options available to students. Um, like us, France has had um, definite challenges with the pandemic, and um, some of their changes and things like that uh, have happened at a different pace than they probably originally anticipated. But that is what's happening. That's what's underway um, in France. Um, I also see a question about, is that reflective of Europe as a whole? Uh, no, I do not believe so, and I, I really can't speak to that. That is something we could get Aurora to talk about, or you could talk about maybe with your partner teacher if you decide to get a, a, a partner teacher through the school partnership application. Um, but I believe that it is just about France that she was speaking. Another thing to think about with education in France, especially since we're talking about international agreements and, and languages and cultures, is the foreign language teaching approach in France. Here you see a simple chart that looks at the age of the student and what foreign languages or how many foreign languages they are taught. You can see that in France, starting in kindergarten, um, the students have an initiation to a foreign language of some kind. Then when they're in primary school or ages 6 to 10, they're, they have one foreign language that they're being taught. When they move into lower secondary, the early year of middle school for us, when they're about ages 11 through 12, they have two foreign languages they're being taught. And then when they move even further in lower secondary, ages 13 to 14, they definitely all have two foreign languages. And the upper secondary level, they're ages 15 to 17 or so, um, at the lycée, the high school, they have either two or three foreign languages. So these are usually required, and so students have exposure over the course of their pre-K through 12 academic career to two or three languages that they are taught and that they are learning. So let's talk a little bit more about education in France's Academy de Rome. One thing I'd like to point out to you there on the right-hand side, you see a little map of France. Um, the Academy de Rome is located in the northeast part, or the Grand Est part, of France. Um, notice that we've got the map of the Academy de Rennes blown out much bigger so you can see it. It's basically four different areas in France and you can see the major cities noted on the map. You may be familiar with that area uh, if you've traveled there or worked there. In the Academy, which again is like a regional school district, so think about one of North Carolina's regions maybe as comparison out of our eight regions. Um, their population is just over a million, so 1.3 million people. 
In contrast, North Carolina has a little over 10 million people total. But when we break that down regionally, of course, we would be looking at different percentages uh, of the population. They have, um, for students or number of pupils in the primary schools, over 125,000. And in the secondary schools, over 113,000. In a presentation, are also shared with us um, how many of those students attend private schools versus their public schools. So I've included that information here in case you need it. It is very similar to North Carolina's uh, numbers. Um, they also have over 17,000, almost 18,000 teachers. So that's a lot of opportunities for partnerships here in North Carolina. They have a number of schools, um, primary schools, um, about 1,100. And secondary schools, um, 160 college or middle schools, and then 75 lycees or high schools. So that's kind of how their education looks in the Academy de Rome, which gives you an idea too of the types of partnerships that we could have with them. And again, emphasizes the fact that we can have partnerships with elementary or primary schools and middle schools uh, at the secondary level with the college or high schools with the lycee. So plenty of opportunities and possibilities there for everyone. Also, Aurora had shared with us several um, what they call policy projects or sort of goals in Francis Academy de Rome. Um, first of all, they want to make sure that there's fluidity in these educational paths, what we spoke before of, of, of students having more choice, particularly at the secondary level in what path they go on um, towards um, graduating and then going into the world of work and going to post-secondary instruction. Also in the Academy de Rome, they have a goal that, they, that all of their students will be proficient in French and in English. And so they're looking at students being bilingual and biliterate in those two languages, as well as other languages, but primarily in those two as a goal to start with. That means good things for us as well. Um, as I said, we are happy to have partnerships between French teachers here in North Carolina and teachers um, in France, but also there are many others who are learning in English and they would like partners too. Um, in addition, like North Carolina, um, the Academy de Rome is fighting against having school dropouts. They want all of their students to graduate and they want to increase the percentage of students who are graduating each year. They also have an equal opportunities policy. Um, you saw from the region and from the map, it's quite a broad area. And they have a lot of large rural areas where they have a high proportion of pupils from underprivileged backgrounds. Um, they also have students who live in very small towns. Um, and may, may have different types of access to educational opportunities. Just like in North Carolina, we have a vast array of, of um, districts and schools and what's available. And so one of the attractions for the Academy de Rome to North Carolina is that we also have rural areas, we have mountainous areas, we have small towns where those kinds of international connections um, and opportunities haven't necessarily happened in the past, but could happen now, particularly with the technology we have. Another focus that the Academy de Rome has is what they call CLIL, Content and Language Integrated Learning. This is dual language immersion or what we call DLI in North Carolina, where students are learning their content, let's say math or science or something like that, in French, but in a language other than French, just like we do here where students learn their content and our state standards in English, but also in another language uh, called the DLI program language. In addition, um, Another policy project that they have is to have a lot of agreements or cooperation work with European and international folks. And they also want to use ICT, information and communication technology. And so they're interested in teachers who want to use things like podcasting and video conferencing and so forth. And recall that Aurora gave this presentation long before um, either country was in a pandemic. So um, those kinds of technology connections have become even more important for the work we do with students and in our classrooms. Well, I see a question about CLIL or the, the dual language immersion that they have. Um, from Bernd, is CLIL happening also on the elementary school level? Um, and I, I would guess yes on that. The way Aurora talked about it, it's an approach they have overall. But if you want more details about that, I can um, refer you to her to get information about that. Or if you fill out a school partnership application, you can ask about that on the application. There is a, a component for that. 
I'm going to check to make sure if we have any other questions about education policies of uh, Academy to Run. All right, so these international agreements are very important to France's Academy to Run, just like they are to North Carolina. Um, they shared with us that they already have school partnerships in the UK or the United Kingdom um, in the three places you see there. Um, they also have, as I told you, a uh, partnership with Virginia and now North Carolina, as well as Andalusia. Uh, in addition to the school partnerships, another thing that they do with their international agreements is that they actually have pupil exchanges with two locations in Germany. Um, that's a little bit different, and of course, Germany is their neighbor, um, much like Virginia is our neighbor. Um, but that's the kind of thing with pupil exchange that can be also discussed with school partnerships, depending on what each group wants to do. So let's talk about our school partnerships and what we've done so far. Um, we have been encouraging people to form these school partnerships uh, with our French partners. Um, the initial set of applications was sent in January of 2020. Um, that was just at the start of this year. We had seven applications from four districts. And what we did was we had, um, we reached out to the North Carolina chapter of the American Association of Teachers of French or AATF, uh, to their officers in particular, and asked them if they wanted to go ahead and submit an application and work with their colleagues. Because as I said, it's not just about connecting French teachers from North Carolina, um, it's about connecting anyone who's interested in, in working with this kind of international agreement. And so the agreements that were sent in the applications um, involve French classes, but also chemistry classes, um, CTE classes in both health sciences and marketing, and theater arts. Um, some of those were connections or partnerships that our teachers here in North Carolina already had. Uh, in fact, I got to hear about a French 2 course that worked with the marketing uh, classes and, and peers. Uh, something they already worked on. And then some of the things like theater arts, we're looking at, for example, um, plays by French authors as well as American authors as a comparative study. So there were lots of interesting um, applications that were turned in. And all of the matches or partnerships were formed um, as of March of this year. And so those teachers have been in communication with each other throughout uh, the spring and summer um, and now into the fall to see what kinds of collab projects they want to do. I think you saw from the announcement that went out about our new MOU, uh, again, those four high schools that are involved. And I wanted to emphasize the high schools as well as the districts they're from and their partners in France and the Academy de Rome. Notice that some are partnered with college, middle schools in various places in France, and some with lycées or high schools in different places within that region or that area of France that the Academy de Rome is located. This information, by the way, as well as links to these high schools is posted on our global education website about international agreements, as you saw when we were looking at that page briefly. So now let's talk about forming new school partnerships and adding to that set. Our next set of applications is going to be due November 20th. It will be part of our International Education Week, which you probably already heard about. Um, which will be celebrated November 16th through the 20th. So that's coming up in about a month. Any pre-K through 12 school can apply for a partnership. And I encourage all of you who are here today to do that and to involve your colleagues and others who might be interested as well. One thing we've been told by the Academy de Rem is that they would like to focus a bit on middle schools. Um, you saw we had several uh, partnerships already with high schools and high school teachers. Um, and now they would like to focus on middle schools. So if you're from a middle school, you have a special encouragement to get an application in for the November 20th group um, so that we can see if we can match you with a middle school there in France in our Academy de Rome. But again, anyone is welcome to apply. Also, any subject or grade level interested in virtual projects is welcome to apply. You saw a sampling of what went in with the initial set of applications in January of 2020, and there's a wide variety. There were world language courses, there were um, science courses, there were CTE courses, there were arts education courses. And so I would encourage you to think very broadly about that and how having a partnership like this could help support things like a global or international theme that you're doing, um, could help you look more creatively or, or differently at, let's say, um, the idea of a community service project, or even think about how you can think global and act local and what kind of project could come from that. 
really when it comes to the projects that are available, it's up to you and the imagination you have and the teacher you're partnered with. One of the things that people have asked about is what is it helpful to have? Not a requirement because anything you know is open to everyone here on our partnerships, but what is it helpful to have? And so we've said it's helpful to have one or more of the following things in your school or district. Um, a language program in your school. It doesn't have to be French, although it might be, but to have a language program shows that your students are learning another language and you might be able to connect with um, peers in France who are also learning that same language, whatever the language is. Also, it might be helpful to have um, something like French offered at the high school, either at the high school you're at, if you're a high school applying, or if you're at elementary or middle school, that French is offered as a language of study, uh, as a world language at the high schools that your students might attend. Another good thing might be if you have a global or international theme for your school and or your district. Um, that might be something that would make your application very attractive to different groups in France. Um, because in addition to us filling out partnership applications, of course, those teachers in France who want to be matched with a teacher here in North Carolina are also filling out applications. So it's important to emphasize why you want that and how what you have at your school will help enhance that partnership and support it. Also, I would encourage you to have a local partner teacher who teaches the subject in English. In the initial set of applications, there were many times where a French teacher partnered with, let's say, a science teacher or partnered with their CTE colleague, either because they already did a project together or they worked closely together in school in general on other things, or because they thought it would be a good opportunity and way to share something that they're doing here in North Carolina with partners in France. And so when you apply with another person with a colleague uh, where there are two of you on the application let's say then usually the matches come back and they partner you with two people in france at the same school just like you are here in north carolina so those are that's the overview of forming school partnerships so any uh, pre-k through 12 school and any subject or grade level is welcome to apply and as i said those applications will be due november 20th so let's talk about submitting a school partnership application. You see on the right hand side of the screen, a screenshot of it. It's very simple and straightforward. Um, you complete a three page bilingual form. So the, the application of course is in both French and in English because again, our partner teachers in France who are looking for um, connections also fill out an application. But on that form is a section about your school where you describe your school, um, you talk about where it's located, um, you talk about what level school it is, who your principal is, what your website is, all of those kinds of things. And you really describe your students and your community as well. There's also a section about dual language and language immersion programs on the form. Uh, if you don't have that, just leave it blank. You don't have that in your school. But if you do have that, whether it's in French or any other DLI language we have in North Carolina, because we have eight of them, um, fill that in if you can. The next section is about your potential partner school, where they ask you, what would you prefer to see? You know, who do you want to be partnered with? What level of teacher? Um, what subject areas? That kind of thing. And then finally, there's a section about your partnership project. And this just kind of asks you overall what you have in mind for, the, for a collaborative project. You don't have to go into a lot of specifics, but I would encourage you to share any ideas you have, um, any insights into what you want to do. And they ask you in there too about how you might connect um, using different technology tools. So be as clear and concise as you can. Um, this is your opportunity to, to really kind of show the vision you have for the project you'd like to do with a partner from France. Once you fill out the form, you just email it to NCDPI Global Education at this email address, which, by the way, is also embedded on the form. And again, like I said, by Friday, November 20th for this batch or this group of applications that we're collecting for International Education Week in November. One important thing to note, too, is that school partnership applications received after that November 20th deadline for International Education Week or IEW will still be collected and sent as part of the next set of applications in 2021. We don't have a date yet for that. What we have done and what, what we were encouraged to do by the Academy to REM is collect applications up to a certain date, then to send them over as a group so that those can be matched with teachers in France and we can get those partnerships underway, and then um, periodically to do that same thing again. So we haven't set a date for that, but there will be, of course, another time in 2021 as well.
All right, before I go on, I want to address all the questions that we have in here in the question box. Um, there is a person who's saying, can we fill this form out for Spain or China or other places we have, or is there a different application? Um, there's actually a different application, and let me be very specific about that. Currently, the only school partnership application that we have that's active is the one with France. And so this one you're filling out to get a partner in France. When we go to renew our MOU with Spain, or if we create an, another MOU, let's say with a Spanish speaking country, some other uh, area in the world, um, one of the things we will ask about is things like a school partnership application or a way to set up partnerships like this. It's very clear and concise for everyone. Uh, we don't have that yet for Spain or for China, but we do have it for France. So this application is specifically for France um, and North Carolina, and you'll see that on the application itself. It's very specific to that. Um, I also see another question. Barrett is saying, are there collaborations with universities possible to attract students from a teacher training program? Um, the answer is probably maybe. Um, this application is for a school partnership with a pre-K through 12 school. Um, if you want something with universities, you may want a different program and we can research that. Um, and we can also talk with our partners in France about that. Maybe there is a different application or some other way to do that. Um, for us, for you to do that. But this particular school partnership application is for pre-K through 12. All right, I'm looking at other questions like in the chat box. Um, Lisa has asked, will there be any grant opportunities available for personal exchanges? Uh, and the answer is, I don't know. Um, when we have grant opportunities, and if you go over right now, to the K-20 Opportunities page on the World Languages website, there are actually some grant opportunities for teachers and students for exchanges abroad and study abroad. Um, when we hear about those, we always post them on that page. And so I would tell you to sign up for the listservs, make sure you can get that information. And likewise, um, through the Global Education Newsletter, which you may be signed up for already, we also put those items on there. Um, for example, right now, the uh, National Security Language Initiative for Youth, or Nestle Y, it's called, um, is available. That deadline is coming up in early November, and that is a grant for students in high school um, to study abroad and do exchanges. Um, there's also some deadlines coming up for ones for students at the college or university level, um, and there's some information about grants right now uh, for teachers who are teachers of Japanese and I believe some other languages on that list. Um, so, when there are grant opportunities available for personal exchanges, we definitely share them through the Global Education Network and through other areas as uh, needed. Um, and if we hear about those resources, we share them. Um, as I said, with the MOUs, they specifically say that there's no financial obligation on the part of either France or North Carolina. And um, if you can arrange something locally, um, with exchanges, because some of our programs in North Carolina already do that as well with classes and, and different groups. Um, that is up to you locally. Um, also, someone's asking, do, I, do we know of other resources other than DPI? Yes, as I said, the other resources that we find out about, like the Nestle Youth Exchange, um, there's a Fulbright Exchange for adults or teachers. Those are from um, different groups. Some of those are from the U.S. Education Department. So those resources are shared, and they are certainly other than DPI. Um, right now, there is no funding uh, almost at any state level for exchanges like this. But as I said, when, when groups like our U.S. Department of Education, uh, the United States Department of State, or other organizations, there's American Councils on International Education, when they have grants and information, we always share those. Uh, so any resources we hear about, we pass along so that people can take advantage of them if they qualify or eligible for whatever is being offered uh, through the grant or opportunity. All right. Well, I'm looking at our time. We're actually doing well on time. One thing I'm going to do now, since I've shared with you all about this partnership application, is go ahead and put a link in the chat box so you can access the application. If you are interested in filling it out, as it says on the screen, um, if you get it to us by Friday, November 20th, we will include it in the batch we're sending over 
to France to set up school partnership, just like we did in January. It may take a month or so for that to happen, uh, depending on what's going on and, and what's in the application and what applications have come from the teachers in France to be paired with colleagues here in North Carolina. But I would encourage you to download a copy of our school partnership form. As I said, it is a fillable PDF. It's, it's like the one you see pictured on the right hand side of the screen right now. Uh, you just fill that information in and then email it back as an attachment to ncglobaleducation at dpi.nc.gov. Oh, Jessica is asking an interesting question. Uh, once you apply, are you a partner for next year and the years following? Yes, if you and your partner teacher in North Carolina want to continue your partnership beyond your initial collaborative project, you certainly may do so. That is up to you. Um, and up to the, the teacher teacher or teachers you're working with in their schools there. Um, obviously, once we pair you with someone, um, it's kind of like having a, a pen pal or a partnership of any kind. You become um, the people in charge of that and about what you do and how you advance and how long you stay partners. But as far as I know, you are partners for as long as you wish to be. All right. So as I said, I'm leaving that up, um, our current slide up for a reason. There's, there's that three-page bilingual form. Um, you just fill it out. Um, you don't have to wait till November 20th to send it in. If you've got it done sooner than that, please email it in to ncglobaleducation at dpi.nc.gov, and we will put it in with the group that's sending over. Um, this time around, I will be the person looking at our application, so I'm eager to see what our teachers turn in and what we would like to do. Um, if I have any questions about your, your application, of course, I will contact you and you'll be able to put your contact information on that. And of course, I'll have it with the email you send uh, when you send in your application form. So that's kind of our overall. I'm looking for any other questions before we go on. All right. All right. So let's just wrap up today. Um, I wanted to remind you the archives from this broadcast will be posted soon as part of NC Global Education. I mentioned that at the beginning, too. Uh, please check the International Agreements section of the DPI website at that bit.ly link, bit.ly slash NC Global Ed. That's where I'll post them. It will take me um, a while to get that done. I usually say I'll, I'll try to get our webinar information posted within a week or so of when we do our initial broadcast. Of course, I'm getting ready for International Education Week, too, as part of our NCDPI uh, celebration. So I'll try to have it up there and ready to go as soon as I can. I do appreciate you being with us here this morning. And uh, since you participate in the live broadcast of an NCDPI Global Education Webinar, you have earned a contact hour towards a CEU for licensure renewal. Uh, that contact hour will come to you in the form of an email with an attached certificate about two weeks from today. So it takes a little while for us to submit our attendance information and for the forms to be created, but they will be coming to you. Uh, and as always, with professional development like that, uh, please note that our local education agencies, our districts and charter schools, must approve professional development offerings. That's it. Um, any final questions that we can definitely talk about? Um, but again, if you have questions, you can always contact NCDPI Global Education using that same address that's on the form. Um, about the school partnership application or anything we do with our global education initiatives. You can also go to our DPI web pages for global education using the bit.ly link. Um, and once again, uh, my name is Anne Marie Gunter. I'm the K-12 World Languages Consultant at DPI. And I think I know some of you from that work as well. Um, but I'm also a member of our NCDPI Global Education Steering Committee. I do appreciate you being with us today and I hope you've learned something. Uh, that you can use as well as share with others and perhaps even fill out a school partnership application. We'd like to see a lot of good applications so we can send them over to France and um, get started on a collaborative project with our French colleagues. <laughs>